I think what happened on our planet is something like this. Uh, four and a half billion years ago, we had a rocky planet with no life. After maybe half a billion years or so, you get the first replicator. That is the first information that is copied with variation and selection. Some little chemical that would be copied, any mistakes would be made or whatever, which then evolved into perhaps RNA, DNA, until you get a really good first replicator. I think what happened then was that one species alone became capable of imitation. And that was some ancestor of ours, something like a, a, a chimp, a, the common precursor of us and, us and chimps, began to imitate. Imitation is a kind of copying. So for the first time on planet Earth, there was information being copied not by chemistry and genes, but by people behaving, perhaps making gestures, perhaps making sounds. Um, and they copied them from person to person. They would have made mistakes. They would have put together two gestures to make a more complicated one or two sounds to make a complicated one. And suddenly you have a new replicator, a second replicator. Information copied by and varied by imitation and selected because not um, every sound or gesture or, or technology is copied. I can't say there ever was a first meme, but amongst the first memes would have been those kinds of sounds and gestures and abilities like making a fire and keeping a fire in, new ways of hunting, ways of making tools. And then what would happen, as happens in any evolutionary process, begins very slowly because there's not much for it to build on. But as soon as people started um, uh, getting better at copying, copying, there were more memes around copy, then there's more selection pressure between the memes. And so it goes on and it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And what I think is happening now is that we're just on the cusp of getting a third replicator. Because what's happening now is, although we humans still do a lot of the copying, we have built machinery that can do the copying without us. Just like the genes built this machine <laughs> and it started copying memes, so we've built our computers and servers and all of this kind of stuff. And that's doing the copying of a new kind of information, digital information in cyberspace, and, and this is, was going slowly uh, 20 years ago, and it's rapidly increasing. And so now on planet Earth, we've got three replicators. We underestimate um, imitation. I think it's a bit like we underestimate vision. You know, we open our eyes, there's the world, and we think, well, that's easy. And then people in artificial intelligence and robotics and so on have been, spent decades finding out just how hard it is to make an artificial vision system. I think the same with imitation. It's really hard to do. It takes a lot of brain. So once it became advantageous to get the latest memes, you need a bigger and better brain for copying them. And that, I say, is how we got our big brains. And that is why our brains are the way they are. Because the kinds of memes that will have thrived in addition to the useful ones, are things like religions, things like rituals, music, art, language, all of these things, mixtures of useful and useless, will have driven the brain to be good at copying the memes that thrived in the past. And that's how I think we can see our brains are being a, a kind of, um, tell a story really of, of all those um, uh, hundreds of thousands of years of, of um, the evolution of the human brain. I was trying to understand how it might be that we have this illusion about the self, this feeling of it being this thing in here that is in control of the body and lives through the life and so on. And I, it occurred to me that it's to the advantage of large groups of memes 
that they tag onto and therefore help construct such an idea. So, for example, if this body, I mean, I can refer to, I don't have a problem with I, this body, you know, there's a thing here that walks around and talks and so on. If I, this body, walk around, talk to you and um, start saying, well, you know, I really believe that memetics is a great science and it's really, you know, that, those words, memetics, science, whatever, get an advantage by me saying, I believe this. And then you'll go and say, well, I don't believe that. And the, the use of the word I, is it's always helping some memes and, and not helping other memes. They clump together. Who am I? Oh, I'm the one who did this, does that, wants this, hopes that, believes that. All of these words, we think they refer to actual things. But what is a hope? Well, it's not much more than a word and a, and, you know. So I would say these are all memes that cluster together for their own protection. And that when you have a powerful self-plex lodged in a physical thing like this, it helps the physical thing go on in life, socially, talking to other people. But essentially, it's just a big group of memes hanging out together for their own benefit. Some people say I should be depressed or gloomy about it. I can see why they say that. But I think if you start feeling that, and you start thinking, but that's terrible, I can't bear it, there's only two ways to go. One is to say, okay, I'm not going to believe it then, which is what a lot of people do. I'd rather believe in God and a spirit and a soul, and okay, fine, go and believe. But you can't, <coughs> to my mind, you can't be a real scientist or a real philosopher or thinker if you're going to prefer to believe what you want to be true rather than what the evidence suggests is true. So what gives me pleasure and keeps me going and makes me smile is, is trying to find out the truth about, about the world and mind and what we do. And if that's scary, well, okay. So are all sorts of things that other people do scary, like mountaineering and skiing and driving fast cars or whatever, whatever things people that turn people on. I mean, you know, that's part of it. So to me, the, the, the intellectual scariness is part of the, it's partly what one has to accept if one's going to go after the truth and partly part of the pleasure of it, frankly.